How's it going everybody? This is the LG G3. This is their 2023 gallery series OLED. This is the 65 inch, so it does have the MLA or micro lens array on it. However, this video will apply to all sizes as this is just a initial setup, unboxing, uh, basic run through the menus, that kind of thing. I will have a future actual review as well as a dedicated settings video where I will go through all the settings, show what they do, and give you recommendations for the most accurate and best settings. Now getting into the unboxing, this is the box, pretty plain brown. This one had a little bit of uh, schmush corners. The wall mount that comes with it does not come with a tabletop stand. The remote and IR blasters, batteries, typical stuff that you'd expect to see. The remote really isn't any different. I will be setting it up with this Sanus mount and do a quick run through real quick of this mount, everything that comes with it. Uh, you just put these four pads on the bottom, four screws to attach the neck to the base, and then you put the part that the TV will actually attach to onto that, and then you can height adjust this with three different options. The TV itself is fully encased in foam, which is great. However, the bottom piece of foam does not split and it covers the bottom VESA holes. So if you are gonna use a VESA mount, you do have to remove the TV in order to do so. You get four HDMI 2.1 ports at 4K 120 full 48 gigabits per second and ATSC 3.0. And before I forget, this TV will fall forward once you take the box off. So be careful or lean it up against something or have someone else help you. Now, this is how the reflection handling looks. I have my curtains open, door open, trying to make it as bright as possible in this room. It will cause the reflections to have a purplish tint to them. However, when it's on, it actually does do a pretty good job of absorbing them. And as we go through this video, you'll see with real content playing how well it does with the reflection handling. And during the initial setup, you get pretty basic options. Do you want AI Picture Pro or Sound on? I turned on the AI Sound Pro and leave the Picture Pro off. For the power on screen, I like it to go to the last input that was used, not the home screen. And then for always ready, it will cause the display to go off without the TV turning off so you can still play music or something. Automatic updates, that's your toggle if you want it on or off, I have it on. And then you sign up with your LG account, which is optional. However, if you're gonna register your TV and such, then you should sign in with your account. You can see here where the remote had an update while I was typing. So if the remote is not working and that's popping up, just give it a minute and it will finish and then work. This is LG's new wallpaper, splash screen, whatever you want to call it. For the first time you start up the TV, you pick the apps that you want to have installed. I just did the YouTube one, that's all I need for now, as I will be using external devices. So this is the home menu screen. There is free LG channels that go through the internet. And now we're gonna run through the basics of the menu some things to toggle on and off, picture modes you should use, etc. Again, I will do a more in-depth real settings video in the near future. If you aren't subscribed, subscribe and keep an eye out for that. So immediately obvious to me, picture was wrong, motion was definitely wrong. It is an auto power save by default. So I'm gonna switch this over to Filmmaker. And this content currently is in SDR. Now I am going to put a little bit of a black border on the screen to avoid copyright with this video as we go through the settings. So the first thing I wanted to do was go to support, make sure that the auto update is on and check the firmware version. So there is a day one firmware update for the TV. So while that's installing, we're gonna go through the rest here. So under general, I'm gonna go down to the OLED care to turn off the pixel shifting, which does reduce resolution in order to move the image around the screen. And doing so will cause the image to not be as sharp as it otherwise would be with native resolution. So screen move, I turned off, and then logo brightness. When you have static elements in games or sports, the higher you set that, the dimmer the image will get over time. I turned that off. And as long as you vary your content, never had an issue with any image retention or burn-in by doing so. Now, if you did need to do a pixel cleaning, that's also where you find it. Now we're gonna back up a little bit, go to the bottom of the general menu where they have moved energy saving. And even though there was the energy saving picture mode, we need to go here and turn it off here. So there's you know, basically two places where there's eco settings that we want to have disabled in order to get the full brightness of the TV and not have the image be changing on us constantly. Now under here with the additional settings, you can change that home setting if you wanted to make it so that it does go to the home screen or your last used input. 
And then you can also disable the promotions and recommendations from here as well. Now for the most part, you won't really need all these other options here, but you can skim through them, see if you do. And then now we're gonna go to external devices. And from here, there's various different things with HDMI settings, controllers, keyboards, your 444 pass through if you need it for PC or gaming, HDMI, deep color, CEC, all that stuff is in there. All right, so I'm gonna back up and go into the picture settings and just see what is on by default, what isn't on, and just where it's putting Filmmaker. So the first thing I notice is the pixel brightness is extremely high for Filmmaker mode, which should be for nighttime viewing, so you might wanna pull that down. And again, with this being SDR, for the most part, the rest of this all is fine. You can go into clarity and adjust some of the processing features if you want to. And then I'm gonna back up and now go check to make sure that the AI settings are not on in Filmmaker and they're not, so that is good. Again, I did turn on the AI Sound Pro. I think if you're using the TV built-in speakers, that is the way to go. There's a bunch of other presets that you can use for the audio. However, I think the AI one just works the best if you're using built-in speakers. And you can see all the other various audio settings here. But if you do have a soundbar or receiver, that's where you find the eARC settings. So now if we go back to the main home screen, I'm just gonna run over to YouTube real quick and start up an HDR YouTube demo. So it starts us out in standard picture mode for HDR. I'm gonna to toggle through and pick Filmmaker. And now what I really wanted to check is, is dynamic tone mapping still on by default in Filmmaker mode? Because with the amount of different picture presets that we are given, and Filmmaker should be the most accurate mode, it would only make sense that dynamic tone mapping would be off in Filmmaker. And sadly to say, it is not off by default, which means the EOTF will be altered and not following the way that it should. So turn this off if you care about accuracy and you're in the Filmmaker mode. That is something that LG really needs to change that should be off by default. Anyway, enough harping on that. Everything else in Filmmaker is where it should be, so you don't have to worry about anything. If you do want to adjust the motion settings or any of the clarity settings, go ahead. But if you do want accuracy, Filmmaker out of the box is all good, except for that dynamic tone mapping setting needing to be turned off. That picture wizard I will look at in a future video, but it is not going to result in an accurate image, so I do not recommend using it unless you are not worried about accuracy. But again, I will go in really deep with all of the settings in a near future video. Now, another menu that I like to use is you click the mute button a bunch of times and it should pop up a little menu on the right side of the screen. For whatever reason, it didn't work right there for me, but it does still work. I'll show that when I get to it in a minute. But we're gonna go through a few other little things here that I like to change. So I don't have a input connected at the moment. So if you go to the home screen, you can go down to your HDMI ports manually. Uh, just double click on it and now you're going to get the no signal screen and then if you hit the red button it will get rid of that no signal box so you just get the art now if i turn the tv off you saw where it said lg and gave that symbol that's what i want to disable with that mute menu for whatever reason the first time it wasn't working after turning it off turning it back on pressing mute a few times the menu did pop up so now i can disable it so when you turn off the tv it just goes black and it doesn't say lg so what is different this year is the settings, this settings menu right here. This is customizable, I'll show that in a minute. If you go up to the top, hit the wheel, or you just hit the settings button again, it'll go into your deep settings. Uh, if you wanna go to family settings, this is the options that are given. And when I had turned the TV off, I noticed it plays a chime or audio. I don't like that, so I'm gonna go here to disable that TV power sound. So now when you do bring up this quick settings menu, you can go over to the pencil thing and edit, and then you can remove some of these, you can change them or reposition them. So now that all the basic functions and stuff is set up how I would recommend it or how I would use it, uh, the next thing I would say is if you do want to get the TV broken in more quickly, uh, something I recommend is just going to uh, some bright HDR content that is gonna be full screen. So I switched over to Netflix and started up the show Our Planet. It's going to be in Dolby Vision. It's cycling through right now the different picture modes and you wanna pick one of the brighter ones. So using Cinema Home here, because Cinema Home does push the brightness a lot more, the average picture level brightness than the accurate cinema mode. 
And now they've added this expression enhancer setting too. So if you turn this on to brightness, it's going to increase the brightness even more. So now letting this play for about four or five hours, then I'm gonna turn the TV off for 15 to 30 minutes so that it gets compensation cycle in. Then I'm gonna turn it on, repeat the process. I just do that when I'm not using the TV. This is completely optional. You don't have to do it. It's just if you want to break it in evenly in the beginning, you know, the first you know 100 hours or so, this is the way that I do it. It causes the panel to heat up and cool down between different types of scenes, and you don't have black bars on the top and bottom for those to not wear in like the rest of the pixels would. And then once you pass the 100 hour mark, you don't gotta worry about doing that no more. And again, you don't have to worry about that at all. That is just optional. And that's pretty much all the recommendations for the first you know, day or so with having the TV, getting it all set up. And I do wanna point out right now that I have not changed the room or anything all the windows the door like right there you can see a little bit of reflection from the door when it's a darker more shadowy area you definitely still see the reflection but when the screen is bright you basically can't see the reflections at all so as far as using a tv with reflections hitting the screen goes it's definitely in the upper range of performance as far as reflection handling and the average picture level does get very bright in these brighter scenes definitely a clear upgrade over previous OLEDs. All right, now I am going to let the TV continue to break in. I'm going to start doing measurements. I will have a live stream in the near future. I will have more videos soon. I have a lot of testing to do with the TV, uh, but I just want to get this initial video out there. If you buy it, just, you know, follow this video to go through and get some of the quality of life features, you know, set up and make sure you're in good picture modes. And again, I will cover in-depth picture settings in an upcoming video as well. Thank you all for watching. I hope this video helps you out and I hope to catch you in the next one. Have a good one. Thanks.